I greet you, everyone, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, today, I'm going to share with you a message which is entitled, How to Survive in the Perilous Times. Uh, but before we start, let us have a word of prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together today. And we ask you to bless us and let the Holy Spirit speak to us so that we may have comfort, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to uh, share together the scripture reading in the book of Second Timothy, chapter is 3, uh, beginning from verse 1. In fact, we are going to start about Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. In, and then I'm just going to, again, to outline so that we can just conclude in understanding the whole chapter, but in just a brief time. Uh, as we will see, in the Second Timothy chapter 3, the Bible's definition of perilous times is somewhat different from that of the average survivalist. Consequently, the keys to survival will lie elsewhere as well. It is not within us, but it is somewhere else. In this chapter, Paul prepares Timothy to face the perilous times ahead. In that chapter, we will find that first is divided, I'm going to divide it into three, and the fourth one is a conclusion. Number one, you have to know the cause of the peril. Number two, you have to know the perils, how it expands. Number three, be willing to face the peril because it is coming to you. Number four, which is the last section, be well equipped for survival. Now, we begin to read from verse one. It says, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Verse two, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, conversious, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, and unthankful, unholy. In verse 3, we read, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Now, when we try to understand this word perilous, in the Bible, we find this word written once in the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 28, where Jesus moved to Jezens. And then there, it says that, and when he was come to the other side into the country of the Jezens, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce. That word fierce is perilous so that no man might pass there. So this word of perilous, the problem is, it is not about earthquakes. It is not about volcanoes. It is not about anything which is in nature. But in the last days, man himself is going to become a dangerous man in our society. Try, war are done by men. All the tragic which we are facing, situations such as tragic situation, killing all over, it is man, even destruction of the natural resources. Man is one who is doing it. In verse uh, 4, it says, They are traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than the lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such... I advise you that you don't have to befriend with such kind of people. In, final, in a final word about these people is that they maintain an outward, outward form of godliness. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof for such turn away. These are not God haters. They probably call themselves Christians and attend church regularly. These are religious people who reject or refuse God's work in their own lives. This is what makes the last days so perilous. 
In Timothy chapter 3, continuing on the section, how the perilous expand. For these sort of men are the one who are going all over. Some of them, they are even preaching the false gospel, which will lead people to die. They are the one who are indeed traitors. And it goes on, verse 7, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They keep on learning, they keep on doing things, but the truth is not. In fact, the word knowledge is relationship with the truth. They will not come to relate with truth. And how it expands, we are told in the same chapter, verse 8 and 9, said, as Janis and Jambre, these names do not appear in the, in, the, in the Old Testament from other literatures. We know that they are the magicians who opposed Moses when the people of Israel were supposed to be set free from the bondage of slavery in perilous time of Egypt. So these are exactly the same which Paul here equates their working with Jen and Jambres. These names are very serious in order for you to know them. Just like Jan Janis and Jambre, false teachers will also be exposed eventually. So in, in conclusions I'm going, I'm moving, as God's people, we must make it our concern not to fall for various forms of deception and false doctrines. Ignorant, weak, and gullible Christians hasten the spread of false doctrines and in due cause undermine the truth preached in the church. Well-taught, stable, discerning Christians hinder the spread of false doctrines and the end makes the church so strong. Now, be willing to face it. Verse 10 said, be thou but thou hast fully known my doctrine. Paul now is concluding by telling Paul, uh, Timothy, you know my doctrine, my man of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. In verse 11 says, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and at Iconia, so, uh, at Lystra, what persecution I endured, but of the, of, out of them all, God delivered me. And it goes on saying, this persecution was meant to take out Paul. He met with perilous people, trying to divert him from the truth. This section, when you go before you, I equip you in how you have to equip in these perilous times. There is a verse which says, Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There are people who are not sleeping at home today. There are people who are being killed by their faith. There are people who are being ridiculed by their faith because we are living in the time where people are boasting, people hate the truth, people are truth breakers, traitors, and high-minded. So therefore, we need to be strong because we are not fighting against flesh and blood. In fact, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, it says, Though we walk in flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. This is the Bible which I'm talking about. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We have the powerful book, which is the Bible. And then eventually, we need to know that for the word of God is so quick and powerful and sharper than two-edged swords piercing even to the dividing ascent of the soul and spirit, and in the joints and marrow, and is a descent of thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his, in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him whom we have to do. Seeing this, 
then that we have a great high priest that is passed through into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. We need to be strong in these last days. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And eventually, but you continue in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. This is part of conclusion. And verse 15 says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Jesus Christ. It is imperative, beloved friends, in these last days, that we must be friend with the Bible. We must be friends with the word of the Lord. Timothy, from childhood, he was taught how to know the issue of salvation. This, what Paul says here, it eventually describes in chapter 1, verse 5, where, where he said, When I call to remembrance that unfailing faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois, and thy mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded that in is you are able to do it. So mothers and fathers, is regardless whether it is a child, we need to teach our children. We need to also teach anyone so that everybody may be equipped in doing things. Finally, it says that all scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. This is what we need to be equipped with because of the last days in which we are living. This is just a message which I wanted to share with you, that no matter you are going through problems and troubles, ridicules, you must be able to stand. So let us pray as we conclude this meditation. Beloved Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for the word. And we ask you, Lord, to bless us and give us strength to continue to fight the, the fight of faith with the weapons of righteousness so that we may be able to be delivered. We ask you to bless each one of us and we Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.